so today is the sixth picture. If you go to YouTube and look for Heart Circle Sangha, the first five talks on the ox herding pictures okay. will come up. They're not long, but you might not be up for listening to all five of them. So these are um, very old pictures depicting our journey. And last In our discussion last time, uh, we talked about the fifth picture, where we were learning how to manage the ox. And the ox is a, um, a symbol of enlightenment, but it also represents in these pictures our life, our ego, our mind. And it's interesting how it works, that even though it represents all these different things, the, the pictures do tell a story. So last week, uh, not last week, but the last talk, we talked about how managing our mind was becoming easier. That we still required discipline and effort, but it was simply easier to keep on track, to maintain our practice. We didn't have to put as much effort into it. The fifth stage, we, in the fifth stage, we, we are just beginning to let go of that tight effort. And our practice becomes more natural. We, we return to our cushion with a sense of coming home to ourselves, And uh, that that reestablishes our sense of practice in a very positive way. <clears throat> we see our storylines, we see our reactivity, we, have a, we begin to develop a, a sense of humor about our own frailty and uh, how easy it is to slip, uh, to let it go, to fall back into all of our old bad habits, our old conditioning. In the sixth stage, we are riding home on the ox. At this point, practice has become our life. We're really at ease. We're not holding ourselves so much in check. Our life feels relaxed, we feel happy, there's a sense of joy, you know, the daffodils are blooming, finally, the sun is shining, and joy just arises. It's a kind of quiet joy, but it's definitely joy. Everything feels easier to bear. And it's not that our life is going any more smoothly than it did before. It's just that we ride our life more easily. Events and people that used to upset us don't upset us in quite the same way. You know, we may feel a sense of annoyance or irritation, but we don't buy into that irritation. You know, we don't kind of, we're not gripped by it. It's just, uh, you know, it's like we notice a, a tinge in our stomach or in our neck or shoulders and uh, we notice a little flash of irritation and um, we kind of say to ourselves, oh, she's still getting to me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of like it's my fault she's still getting to me, not that it's her fault that she's getting to me. See that shift away from blaming. 
we laugh. We laugh at our own grasping, our own ambition, our own anger. We feel relaxed and happy most of the time. We don't feel like we're struggling. Life is just easier. So take a look at the verses that go with this. Shields and spears are gone. Winning and losing are nothing again. You sing woodsmen's village songs and play children's country tunes. Stretched out on the back of your ox, you gaze at the sky. We call you, but you won't turn around. We catch at you, but you won't be tied down. Riding high on your ox, leisurely you head for home. Trilling on a nomad's flute, you leave in the evening mist. In each beat and verse, your boundless feeling. To a close companion, what need to move your lips? Lowing at mind, limpid and soaring sky. White clouds are coming back to the peaks. So I love the relaxed quality of that first verse, the preface. Shields and spears are gone. We, we carry our protectors around with us everywhere when we're embedded in the world of duality. Always protected. What a pleasure to simply drop them and meet everyone face to face in the present moment. We can be open, we can be vulnerable, we can be available. And that constant competitiveness, maybe you don't hold this problem, but comparing yourself to everyone else, mm -hmm. winning and losing, how crazy making is that? What a strain. It's so lovely to let that go. Life can be simple and happy. We don't need anything more. Singing village songs and children's tunes, playing a flute. We just express our own joy. Just this, the daffodil. Bright, sunny, perky spring arrive finally. And I love the line, we call you but you won't turn around, catch at you but you won't be tied down. Our old habits of thoughts have formed pathways in our brain so that desires continue to arise but we are not caught up by them. We see them, but we don't respond blindly. They're just our old conditioning. Often they simply amuse us. I still want that? Jeez. <laughs> our sense of humor is very alive. With a close companion, we can walk in silence, sharing the mood, sharing the atmosphere, smelling spring fragrances. I don't know if you noticed the fragrance of the hyacinths as you walked up the driveway. They're really powerful. Feeling the breeze in our face. We feel our connection, and that's enough. There's no need to talk. And if the day is cloudy or cold, we don't let that get us down. We appreciate all the moments of our days, whatever it is. There is a pervasive sense of quiet joy. We cannot go backwards anymore. 
Until this point, there is always the possibility that we will give up the struggle and stop practicing. In fact, most people do stop practicing on fairly regular periods. I remember quitting. <laughs> but once you're on this train, by this time, you can't really stop because it's who you are. Your life is transformed. You are transformed. It's a hard practice and very demanding. And we think it conflicts with our life. We have doubts. Is it worth it? But now the doubts are resolved. We're in this, transformed into this new, no-self person. We've begun to experience a state of mind, a state of no mind, that is at ease with itself and the world. We see that the world of duality is one of dis-ease. And we cannot go back to really seeing the world from that perspective once we've seen it from the standpoint of our interconnection. We have compassion for all those stuck in duality that, and that compassion just arises. We feel the pain of others. We had our time on the mountaintop, and now we descend into the world of reality. The world of reality is a dualistic world, but we see it, we see through the dualism, we see it through the lens of interconnection, through the oneness. We're not caught by it. We return home. We see the struggle, but we are not struggling. We see the suffering of others and we want to serve. There is a natural transition to a commitment to saving all sentient beings. We live in a dualistic world, but we carry within us the knowledge of the one body. We operate from the understanding that we are not separate, but interdependent, and we see the impermanence. We unconsciously model that inner knowledge to all who meet us, and we teach just by being ourselves. That knowledge changes all of our perceptions. We see impermanence. We see death and we just accept it. We see right and wrong without judging. It's a paradox. We worry less. The things that we used to worry about we see as empty, and we are content with what we are, what we have. Life is full and rich. We happily make do. We are relaxed, and everything brings us joy. We see others get upset about events that do not upset us, and we want to help them. Sometimes just hearing our perspective on things is enough to help them shift their point of view. We are riding the ox home to our no mind, where the ox takes the lead, and calmly guides us through our daily life. We've turned everything over to our ox. We trust that he, she will lead us where we need to go. <laughs>